Hey, and welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to be making a local cell shader in UE4 and 5. We're actually going to be using a similar technique found in a previous tutorial. If you're interested, check it out here. However, this time, we're going to be calculating our cell shading locally on an actor itself, instead of using a post-process material. Cool, so the first thing we're going to do is actually make a material function. So if we right-click and create a material function, and let's call it MF underscore local cell. And if we jump into this guy, and the first thing we're going to want to do is tick on exposed to library. And this is just so that we can actually add this effect and function to any material going forward. Cool. So the first thing we're going to have to do is calculate our local lighting. So if we right click and create a atmospheric sunlight vector, like this guy down here, and we just want to get the dot product between this guy and our vertex normals, like this. And if we chuck this guy into here, you're going to get something like this. And what's happening here is that this is the direction of the light hitting the surface of the object. Now the cool thing is, is that we have a gradient here from black to white. And we can use that to control the color of our light and shadows. So if we saturate this for safety, and then layer, like this, and chuck this guy into the result, we can go up here and create a 3 vector. Now if we promote this to a parameter and call it shadow color, maybe stick it to like a blue for now. And if we chuck this guy into the A, which is the black area, and for more control, we're going to create an input for our function. And this is going to be a three vector, and we're going to call it color in. And this guy is going to go into the B, which is the white area. And you'll see it appear black here. And the reason for that is that our preview is empty. So what we can do is create a scalar parameter by pressing 1 and left clicking, throwing that into the preview, and just setting it to 1 for now. Cool. So if we apply and save, and come back out here, we're going to want to use this function in a material just for testing at the moment. So I'm going to right click and create a material. And I'm going to call this M underscore local cell shader. And I'm just going to drag this onto an object, like here. And if we open this gap, like this. And if we give ourselves a wee bit of space here, we want to add our cell shader into here. So if we right click and search for MF underscore local cell. I have two for now, but you only have one. And if we connect this guy up to the base color, and then the emissive color, we'll get a little error, and that's because we don't have our color connected. Now this can be a texture or anything else you've got calculated beforehand, but for now we're just going to add a little color. So if we left click and press 3, and promote this to a parameter, and call it color, and if we just shoot this guy into here, and for now I'm going to set this to sort of yellowy white color, like this, and you'll see we have our gradient, which is cool. Apply and save. Now we can keep this as default lit, however that will keep the default lighting as well. But for the best results, what we can do is set this to unlit. And this will exclusively use our local cell shader for its lighting. Okay, so if we jump back into our function, we want to start making our gradient step or cell shader kind of look. So if we jump over here just a little bit, and disconnect this guy for now. Just chuck him a wee bit over here. Like that. We're going to add two nodes just before we make our step effect. Just for a little bit more control. And this is going to be an add. We can promote this to a parameter. And this is going to be called shadow offset. And as standard, we'll set this to 0.5. And then a power, which is going to allow us to control the scale of our steps. So if we just call this step scale. 
and set this to 0.9 for now. Let's just chuck this over a wee bit more. What we're going to do is make a lerp here on the right hand side and we're going to build our step effect in the middle. So out of our power, if we create a multiply and we promote this to a parameter and we're going to call this step offset and as default let's say that's 3 for now and then we're going to saturate this and then floor this. And we're going to chuck this guy into the alpha. Cool. Now at the bottom, what we'll do is drag out the power. And we're going to multiply this. And we're going to promote this to parameter. And we're going to call this step count. And we're going to set this to 3 for now. Now after the multiply, we're going to floor this. And then we want to divide this by our step count, like this. And then all we need to do is saturate this, like this, and chuck this into the B, like this. And this is our step or cell shader calculation where we can control how many steps there are and how large they are with this guy and the step scale. Now just for a little bit more control, after our lerp, if we pull it out here and create a power, and we can promote this to our parameter, and let's call this lighting fall off. And as standard, we'll set this to 2 for now. And then after this, we'll multiply. And we'll promote this to a parameter. And we'll call this lighting intensity. And as standard, that's going to be a 1 for now. And after these guys, we just want to add a little bit of control over how much influence the shadows have over the base model itself. And the easiest way to do that is create a layer. And we'll create two parameters here. The first one, out of the A, will be called Shadow Min. And the second one, which will be connected to the B, will be called Shadow Max. And the Shadow Min should be set to 0, and the Shadow Max should be set to 1. And now all we need to do is chuck this into the Saturate, apply and save, and in the preview you'll already see we have some sort of step cell shader effect. But if we go into our scene, we'll have this guy. Now, to control this in the scene, what we can do is create an instance from our material. We can chuck this guy onto here. Open this gap. We just uh, tick on a few of these parameters just so we can play about. It's looking quite cool. And the nice thing about this effect is it actually updates with the lighting. So if we grab our directional light and move it, it will go with it, which is nice. However, it doesn't react to the light lowering. So if we put this to zero, it's still going to be emissive. Now, the best way I've found to actually solve this is if we go back into our function just give ourselves a little bit of space at the beginning here. We can get our atmospheric light luminance. So if we go down here, right click and search for Sky Atmosphere Distant Light Scattered Luminance. That's some name. <laughs> and what we want to do with this is drag out and mask this. 
to the red channel. Multiply this by around 30, as it's quite dull as standard. That'll give it a little bit of a boost. And then if we clamp this between 0 and 1, we can now use this to lerp between our calculations in the B and our shadow colour in the A. Like this. Now just before heading back into the scene, if we add some of these guys to groups, so shadow colour. Shadow for these guys. And all of these guys can be put into step. Like this. So if we apply and save, and go back into our scene. And we lower this guy. You'll see it slowly becomes more and more blue. Which is our shadow color. But if we put it to black, for example, it'll become more black as we go down. Now the cool thing about this effect is that we can actually add this to any material or object that we like. So for example, if we click on this asset here, and we find a material, like here, and then we go into this material again, like the, the master material, all we need to do is search for our cell shader function, and plug in the color, like here, chuck this guy into the emissive, and change our default lit to unlit, like that. Line save. So if we go back into our scene and into our instance for this guy, you'll have the options from our function. And you'll be able to control the local effect on the asset. And because this is added to this particular asset and its material, it can have its own shadow settings that are different to another actor. So you can kind of curate it in a way. So this guy can have red or pink shadows, for example. And this guy can have blue. Which is pretty sick. But yeah, I think that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.